about these meetings, I want to see what the response is going to be. So the ones that don't know about it, firstly, I'm going to invite them. That's why I need like a month or two weeks, whatever. But everyone who votes on the length of time to have the next meeting, I'll abide by that. One thing about this community where I grew up, we're very passive. Until something happens, we wake up, what happened? Well, you weren't involved. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and this is, and, and, wait, wait, I'm not doing it. I was in there. I'm sorry. El Sereno is, is a non-readable community. <coughs> it's about face-to-face -face communication. I want to clarify <laughs> that. We're not, you're not anywhere near, I mean, we're, what are the time, what's the time frame we're looking at? Right now, we're, this is very preliminary. We're not going to take any action on anything. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we could have another meeting or two to try to, you know, answer any more questions or, you know, try to consider some more things. But I mean, but you have a so timeline, right? What's your, what, when are you looking at starting construction, ideally, or? Well, the first step is we need to kind of submit an application, which we haven't submitted yet. When do you intend to submit? Do you have any, anything in mind? Two weeks? Months, three months, four months? Probably in the next four or five weeks. Next four or five weeks? Yeah. yeah. Everything's solidifying, and then we'll work, we work out the details on the lot size, all of those things as we go through. We want to not miss this opportunity to check in with the community about all of our outreach. Yeah. That's why I want to get here tonight. So um, there, there was actually another question that was asked. I don't know who asked, asked it, but it had to do with the homeless station or maintenance right. or something. Mm -hmm. And then also in the last, in the last meeting, I, I, I misspoke. I kind of fumbled up the answer. Um, <clears throat> but when we when we create these streets, they're all going to be private streets built to the proper standards. But they remain private streets, and we have public trash collection. Okay, so it'll be designed so that all the houses will be will have their own trash cans, and the trash will be picked up by the trucks with mechanical arms. So it won't be like in a park. Uh, apartments kind of where people roll the things out to the curb and all that. So it's a It's easy to come down. It's a private road, right? No, it's it's public access road, but it'll be owned private. Not it's not a private road. Yeah. Well, the city maintain the no. 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 Okay, so so anyway, um, okay, I think let's have one conversation about Okay, so so I was trying to just answer that the question that that the, the streets are, are are gonna be built, they're open, they're not private, meaning they're not gated off to anybody. But they're privately owned by the homeowners here, so there's no outside cost to it. Okay. So we build them and then they're owned there and then trash and, and things are... are like, they're like, more like long driveways there, what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's the kind of way to do it. So the maintenance association would take care of the um, landscape. Um, the irrigation system is all going to be um, recycled water. Um, that will get captured. Yeah. Um, and let's see. People asked about lot walls and landscaping concepts, and we don't have walls designed yet on the plan. It, it's something that will come later. But the landscaping, what we did talk about, but I wanted to reiterate because I think it was still maybe not 100% clear. The idea is to have um, natural vegetation that's low water consumption. Okay? So that's what we want to do, is essentially low water, what, what's native to here, and want to retain as many trees on the site that are there. Any tree that gets removed, if it's a non-protected tree, gets replaced one for one. If it's a protected tree, it gets replaced four to one. So um, it's to our benefit to keep all the as many trees as possible. Um, there was a lot of people were kind of talking about green building and, and that sort of thing, and you know there are some things that we're doing. Um, and it will, it will be like Energy Star, which is what we always do. Well, that was asked. Yeah. I, I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, security that, that was brought up as a question. Um, there is not going to be a gate or anything, and we, I don't really know really how to address that. We did speak with you know folks, and I, I just don't think there's any particular you know security issue. People just I mean there's just going to be homes in that area. Um, height restrictions. We talked about we were going to. What we did say in the last meeting is we were thinking about seeking a variance to do a high, taller building. Um, you know, people, you know, kind of commented on that. There was sort of like a negative response to it. Um, we still think it's better, but we've drawn this plan with all two stories. We can do it. And you guarantee that the three-story building are just great food? Well, <laughs> okay, it depends how big you're looking at. They have to be engineered to determine what standards. Well, I, well it, it really comes down to kind of our minds. We're, 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 we're coming here to listen to folks. Do you have to wait to fall within the building? No, so the three would, would that we, if we wanted to do three story, we would have to ask for a variance. Okay, so if you ask for a variance, that's a strain from that ordinance. Now, yeah, the area we're looking at the three stories where it was blocked by two stories, but once you're in, you can get more interesting architecture in there where you get a variation of heights. If you're going to do a three, three story home, are you going to double the ordinance? You know, there's a certain code for, for two story houses, right? You mean building codes? Yeah, yeah. Code. building code. Yeah, when you build three story, yeah, when, when, when you build three story, it's, um, you, 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 there's different. Uh, engineering that's done. Change, change, yeah. 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 In the whole three stories, would you be decreasing the amount of properties you're building, or you're still going to do the Well, it's the same number. The difference is the footprint of the building becomes smaller on a three story. So you have more open space, and that individual home gets a bigger yard. Let me ask you around that. Yeah, so, so we, we had it on there, but we're, I think we're thinking we're not probably going to do that. So, yeah, well, so, you know, we're listening. So, you know, saying that we're not listening isn't really true. You know? Okay, Mr. Kassam, I'd like to, okay, what I'd like to do is, if we say we're going to have another meeting in, in one month, November 4th. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Two or three weeks, three months. Uh, November 5th. Wait, what did you say? November 5th. Yes. Well, That's the Wednesday, November 4th. No, I said November 4th. Let's do um, either the Wednesday before or the Wednesday after. I think after is better. If we do November 12th? 11th. Is that okay? Yes. What, what I'd like, though, is if, if, uh, if you can provide a fact sheet of things that have already been covered, that'd be great. And then I can get it out to everyone here prior to you submitting your questions. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, that's better. Tuesday. And we're going to meet here, Marty? Just a second. That day is a better day to give them so that they can So then let's go to the other one. Or the 12th, Wednesday? Are you going to meet at the 12th? Our assessment is 12th. November?
43 homes? Is that what you're asking for? Ultimately, is that what you're asking for? Yeah, that's the zone change that's from that's 46 to 44. We're supportive. We're supportive on this. That's right. a small lot. That's right. That's and right. you need to go through the same thing that you're asking for. What? It's a small lot for you to have the zone change. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, well, it's the zone change. I think when you're in either RD6 or RD5, you can utilize the smaller ordinance. I see. Okay. So does everybody understand that? That's what he's asking from the neighborhood the council? He will, he will be asked eventually. He wants the neighborhood council to provide yeah. a letter of support for their reason. I have one comment. If we're going to have it November the 12th, wow. we're going to have more people. What I want to ask is for you, I mean, if your neighbors, for your help to also get the information right, out. Right. We'll get it out to as many people as we can from our database. Can we tell you ahead of time we're going to ask so many people and you're going to get a bigger room? We'll probably go for... <laughs> did you, when you originally considered purchasing the site, did you uh, figure out what realistically you could build on it with the current RD6 and RD1? Mm -hmm. That was a 35. 35? And that was not, that was not enough to break one of the previous. No. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah, and, and it would just be plucking out, eight homes also instead of landing, which really wouldn't, you know, like, it's small, but that was a small lot, or it's like, it's still going to what what you, what you do is take 4.91 multiply it times the number of square feet in an acre and you get the total number then divide by 6000 but not all of them are 6000 Right, you have to come to R1. Yeah, there's a, there's a proportion that's it. Well, it's R1. And what is that? So that allows for a minimum of 5,000. So maybe you could get a little more. I thought, wasn't it 12,000 though? 31 was 104,000? Yeah, R1 was 5,000. So if you have one acre and it's R1, you can have five on one acre. No, we close our 5,000 square feet. And that, the last thing about what for you, the streets to be used, and that there's yeah. not a easy answer. So, our, so, we're not allowed that use of these matters, or our land use lawyers, but R1, so it has to be finding, allows for minimum 5,000. I thought it was long time in the 10,000, but I could be wrong. I looked at the back of the we have a question over here. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So our ones will be minimum five thousand. Okay. Now the RD six is minimum six thousand. We want to move that to RD five. <coughs> and then the R one would also become. It's just you just have one. It comes together. Yeah. Can we take one more question and then yeah, over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I would like to just clarify because it's very complicated when you talk about what's what's available by right. So when Mr. Cassell was saying that given the square footage, you could do 35 homes by right, that's the square footage, but that's not really taking into account what would work building on a hillside within the hillside ordinance, et cetera, et cetera. So even though some of that square footage might cover the very steep field foundation in Lombardi, that doesn't really mean that you could truly build a house there. So you have by right the ability to build, build 35, but that doesn't mean that you could literally in actuality build 35 homes on the hillside. Yeah, so so along with that, that that's Thank why you. this is a process and that's why we don't have every exact answer figured on day one. If this were like a flat square site, it could be, you know, figured out, you know, pretty, pretty quickly and easily and it's just everything's set. Here, when, you know, you're, you're trying to like balance a whole bunch of things. The existing roads at 18%. Current grade maximum is 15%, okay? So when you flatten out this road a little bit by that 3%, it impacts, you know, the hill, and it impacts the gradient. And then you have, you know, retaining walls, 
and then you have just various different physical elements. So again, it's just pure math gives you one thing, but then you also have to do all of the engineering, and everything has to comply with all of the different departments. So that's what we're we're you know working on, and and it is a process, and so that it, it's something that that's ongoing. And, and ultimately, it's, it's got to comply. But I also wanted to mention another thing, too. The Northeast Hillside Ordinance, as you explained to us, was really designed to govern how individual homes are developed and built in the, all the, in the geographic area of the Northeast. And there's a geographic area, and that's a specific ordinance. And it was really designed to govern how a single house was. It wasn't originally designed to govern a subdivision where you have multiple houses and different issues. And so, you know, we are doing our best to try to understand those rules which overlap with the Hillside Ordinance, which overlap with the um, Small Lot Ordinance, which just overlaps with just general building codes and general zoning. So there's a lot that's going on. And sometimes, you know, we don't have the answers, we don't know. And I may indeed say something that's wrong. And if I do, it would be a mistake because I didn't, you know, understand or I didn't question or misspoke. So there's there's a lot that goes into it to, to creating this. And an example that occurred to me is if we were all in the car business and someone came up with some rules on how do you build a single individual car, and it talked about the tires and the this and where the steering wheel is. And then you took that set of standards and you try to apply it to a train, you know, a lot of it's just not going to really apply. And there's not a way for a subdivision or a train to really comply with the design guidelines for a car because it's just inherently different. There's different things. And so the way the city looks at it is when you come in with a submittal, the way it's been explained to us, and believe me, we've had multiple meetings with all sorts of planners, is they come in and they look at everything and they realize that that Northeast Hillside Ordinance is in existence, but that it doesn't fully apply. And so the idea is to work with this, try to comply everywhere we can. You know, one thing would be, okay, let's not do three-story homes, even though we have multiple really good reasons to do it, even though it doesn't negatively impact us in our opinion. You know, but that's kind of like an objective thing. It's not like, well, no. I mean, there's a hype from it, and we were talking about going beyond it. And if it's that offensive to everyone in the area, then maybe we shouldn't do it. Maybe, you know, we should, well, let's step back and rethink that. Maybe we should do it with that, okay? So there's other things. So we are working with it, but you just have to realize it's a hillside and there's a lot of things. There's geotechnical, there's public safety. We're very well aware of the school across the street. And that's why I've had a number of meetings with them to find out what their, you know, thoughts are and what their concerns might be. One of them is not widening the street because they don't want people parking. They don't want parents or kids dashing across. They want to use a car. We so, have to wrap up for our sake. I don't know if you're willing to stay and answer some questions, or, um, individual questions that they may have. Again, Jorge does have something to say. We are going to schedule a meeting for November 12th. Okay. You guys are going to get me a fact sheet by October 20th. Okay. And I'm going to get that out to everyone and you'll send us questions, specific questions to get back. And I wanted to ask, is there anybody from the city that you, that you all as neighbors might find beneficial to attend? Departments? I'm a leader. I mean, like the uh, Traffic, Fire. Bureau of Engineering, Bureau of Sanitation. I don't know what your concerns are. The councilman's office, well, the councilman has a representative here. Yeah. But I'm talking yeah. the specific yeah. city yeah. departments. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. I don't know, Marlene. Can you get your boss here? I don't, I don't know if city, I mean, the city's business hours are during all of hours. I have no idea. We've never asked oh, okay. them. Oh, I would um, but if you, if you want to ask, make you can, we can communicate. We can tell you who we're working with. I mean, like, the, like people in these various different departments. Yeah. And you can invite them. There, there's people that go out to the to this project, right? Yeah. Okay. They would have direct knowledge on this project. Well, yeah, there's like an individual yeah. who's kind of like our case planner. Right. Out of the planning department? In the city of Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a planner for Northeast. Yeah, so he, maybe if he gets invited, maybe he would come okay. and could explain. Yeah, they have salary. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
So I was just saying, um, there are two actual precedents that this project might ask us to address. And I think that it's very important that we look at them. One, we have not had developments in the Northeast Hill Science Area. We have not had developments while the ordinance has been in effect. And so if this project is passed, it sets precedent for future developments on our hill side. And that's a really, really important element. When was the Northeast Ordinance passed? Do you know? I believe it's like that. Yeah, that's not a little actually. Okay, well then, that's actually not true because in the city of El Sereno, in 2009, and actually it probably started a little bit before then, there was another subdivision that Williams Homes did. Uh, what was that street? It's on the north oh, side of the Drive. Oh, I don't know about the... It was about 17 homes, detached single family. I should clarify, maybe a small lot development. No, that's small no, lot. That, we that's have not beautiful. had small lot development. Additionally, that's small lot. other precedent that's small. that would be set here would be changing a zone to allow small lot development. Right now, the small lot development is not allowed in R1 zoning, and that's single family zone. It's allowed in multiple dwellings. I was using the wrong terminology. I was saying multiple family. It's allowed in multiple dwelling zones and commercial zones, but it's not allowed in single family zones. If this zone change is enacted, that means there's a precedent for allowing small lot development in single family homes. We have another project reflecting that on Onyx in El Serena. It's a huge hillside lot, 3.9 acres. And it's reflecting the same thing, a zone change to allow small lot development in single family areas. That's a precedent that would be set and therefore allowed all throughout Northeast Los Angeles. And that's a big step for us to take. It's really serious what we're looking at here. Thank you. And thank you for the information. You have a top view of that. <laughs> Could you give us a side view of the hill? So, does, does everyone live up over here? No. And everyone? The Holy Cross meeting was videotaped. This was supposed to be videotaped. And I'm going to put the, give give a list of the link to preservationhandle.org. And also the uh, other two uh, website, the, the links to those videos, so that you guys can watch them and just see what what's been already been asked uh, and answered, of course, so that we could uh, better uh, curtail the questions or, or not curtail, but uh, just direct the questions if, from the next meeting, from November uh, 12th. So that way, uh, if they've been answered, you guys know the answer if they have it, or or the few questions that you might come up with as the videos. Um, it'll, uh, I'll, I'll, they'll, be, they'll be sent to Melissa and and. Uh, the, and see uh, President Marlene, so they could be on the website, www.org, right? www.org, and www.org. I'm going to have some of my cards, so you guys can take them, uh, and okay. you can email me, any questions, any Thank concerns, um, requests, like you said, um, for the compliment to be here. But for now, I don't know, again, if you're willing to stay a few minutes to answer questions. And I do want to state that the next meeting, as you'll see on the agenda, the focus will be on there may be some action taken. <coughs> Hopefully, if we're all ready by that time and we have enough information. And the action there. Are requesting action for the next meeting? They're requesting uh, support. Yeah. I, I thought you weren't sure what you were going to do. Oh, in this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. They're requesting support of. Um, uh, next set, yeah, rezoning to RD5. Well, I, I don't think we should give support until they have no, an application. Right. We're not ready. Oh, no, not right no, now. No, 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 not right now. I'm just saying that would be the focus. I'm not sure that, that we will that's either. That's my opinion. Not even next, next month. I bet that will be eventually when they get. That's, that's, what, the focus, that's, what, that's the, what the focus of this committee is. Right. I understand there's a number of, of concerns that the community right. has as far as neighbors. And Our kids are very important. I understand. <laughs> here also. But for now, I do need a motion to adjourn the meeting. And then, again, if you're going to stay. So to adjourn? Yeah, I second. Second. <laughs> 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 We're all in favor of adjourning the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>